Hello and welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine Today. My name is Tamara Rosevan and in our studio I'm joined by Mr. Volodymyr Yermolenko. He's a Ukrainian political scientist and one of the lecturers at Ukraine's top universities. Welcome to Viewpoint. Hello. So on November 10th, the Ukrainian parliament failed to pass yet again a law which is uh, part of a package of laws which has been set as a condition by the EU for Ukraine to receive visa-free regime into the Schengen zone. Now, this law is the, um, it's part of the labor um, code, code, and it states that, um, which kind of um, says that bans discrimination against, um, on the basis of sexual orientation. And the Ukrainian parliament failed to pass this yet again. In your blog, uh, on your uh, personal um, social media page, Facebook, you wrote that the Ukrainian society is not ready for this kind of law to be passed. And maybe it's because the kind of wording hasn't been uh, talked about more, hasn't been explained, and um, the Ukrainian society hasn't come to terms with it. So why hasn't it been passed? Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Well, I would I would disagree with an idea that Ukrainian society is not ready, mm -hmm. because I was I was telling that ironically. I think right. parts of the society is, is surely ready for this. Part of the society is not, and it's it's always like that. I mean, it, in many societies, it's like that. There is no there is no something extraordinary in that. I mean, uh, because Ukrainian society is a, is a society that comes gradually to, you know, some more liberal values mm -hmm. from uh, more traditional values. Would you say it's more conservative and more kind of uh, religious? Conservatism becomes a trend uh, throughout the world right now, in throughout the, U the European countries. Just look at far-right success in many European mm -hmm. countries, starting, I don't know, from Hungary, Austria, Switzerland, France, and all the same. In this context, Ukrainian society is doing well because far-right on political level just get a few percent on the mm -hmm. election. On, at the same time, this, you know, neo-traditionalist or uh, religious rhetoric plays a role, of mm -hmm. course, uh, because it's, it's basically an ideology that comes to the void, liberated mm -hmm. probably from the, from the communist times. Okay, well, um, after uh, the law was, they failed to pass the law the, the first time, a uh, politician said that um, as a country with a thousand-year-old Christian history, we simply cannot allow this to happen. This was uh, Deputy Pavlo Ungrian, a member of Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk's party. So he said that, you know, this, this attempt to pass it is against Christian values. Um, what do you say to that? I think it's a very stupid remark. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, again, uh, many people, many politicians right now talk about, you know, return to religion. Look at Nicolas Sarkozy, who said that recently that uh, France has a Christian history, right. Christ Christian tradition. Uh, but I think uh, uh, the, the point is not that, you know, uh, th this law is misinterpreted by many because this re uh, this amendment, as you said correctly, uh, says bans discrimination on any sexual orientation grounds. Mm -hmm. And it's important to communicate this to society. I think uh, there is still lack of communication and probably lack of willingness of some people to to understand that this is this is law about equality and not mm -hmm. about gays mm -hmm. only this is law about discrimination on on racist grounds on sexual grounds on sexual orientation on gender etc etc so this well, is not well not racist though not on based on race grounds this is specifically on you know based on sexual orientation in the workplace so yeah. Based on your orientation, you are not supposed to be discriminated against. This this law is widely known in in the West, and it's widely. But observed. that's the problem because this is a amendment to uh, to labor legislation, which enumerates all other types of discrimination too, which it, which it bans. Mm -hmm. So, I personally remain optimistic. I think that the, 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 there is a growing mobilization of Ukrainian civil society, and that that finally this law will be passed. I, I, I have an impression of that. Uh, but again, I mean, I, w I wouldn't say that this, this failure testifies that Ukrainian society is homophobic. I think it testifies that there is huge misunderstandings mm -hmm. about the way w what this law is, is mm -hmm. all about. I mean, just based on some of the headlines that came out 
after uh, on after November 10th, um, you know, foreign policy, Ukraine chooses homophobia over over Europe. That's quite a strong headline. And uh, how do you but Ukrainians don't tend to kind of look at Western media and get their news from there. So they're not quite aware how the West perceives them. And yes, I the think West there is, a, that there is still an illusion that the West uh, remains in this romantic Euromaidan impression of Ukraine, right. which is not the case. I mean, and Ukrainians should, uh, should understand it too and, and increase their understanding, well, that there is growing disappointment in the West about not real good pace of reforms. Uh, on my part, I think that this disappointed is, disappointment is all, all also exaggerated to some kind mm -hmm. because some Western observers uh, also tend to o o exaggerate this disappointment and this lack of reforms because reforms are much more successful than, say, after the Orange Revolution. Uh, but uh, How successful would you say they are? And how do you think the West kind of perceives Ukraine's... Um progress on reforms and passing these key, uh, this package of laws, which includes... Well, the, 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 the thing is that reforms, uh, those reforms who are, which are passing are very detailed focused and very technical. For example, reforms on state aid, reforms on, uh, you know, public procurement. Who, who is interested in that? So mm -hmm. it's not a sexy topic for, for media even. Uh, but this is reforms are all about that, about mm -hmm. these technical very issues, about the way how you help the economy uh, work better, how you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, but of course, I mean, I think you Ukrainian politicians are some, many of them are too coward to uh, say that, look, we are really going to liberal values. Mm -hmm. Euromaidan was also all about Part of Euromaidan mm -hmm. was about patriotic values, but part of it was about mm -hmm. liberal values. I think the, the problem of our politicians, of many, you know, parties like Samopomich even, mm -hmm. who, supposed to, who was supposed to be liberal, but it plays on this conservative rhetoric. Right. But, I mean, it seems that mm, when the law wasn't, wasn't passed, a lot of the politicians kind of complained that there wasn't enough said about these laws which were uh, set uh, as a condition by the EU for Ukraine to receive um, visa-free um, regime. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it seems that, um, for, for example, one of the... Um, one of the uh, the Rada's deputy speaker, Oksana Sarid, um, kind of made a remark that this um, discrimination law against uh, sexual orientation, that it was just sprung up on the Rada and nobody was expecting it and it wasn't talked about. Uh, how do you think the, the politicians and why do you think they kind of say that it has been sprung up on them when really this has been talked about, these conditions set by the EU have been talked about for months and... It's, it's not years. even for months; it's for years. Yes, and years. The, the first, uh, the first failures of these amendments were under the Yanukovych regime, mm -hmm. and I think that current parliament. Uh, um, I'm, I'm making the direct link to them. I'm, I'm making a direct link to current politicians. I'm saying to them, to them, look, you're repeating what Yanukovych regime, regime has done and what the parliament under Yanukovych has done. But uh, so, do you see a similarity between the kind of parliament that was set? During the yeah, of, regime course, now. of course, of course, there are some similarities, mm -hmm. and uh, again, this playing on uh, on on this new neo-traditionalist rhetoric, which again, the problem is not even that. The problem mm -hmm. is that the the controversy is overestimated, that the uh, the messages which are not in the law are communicated to the society as if they are in the law. Mm -hmm. But again, my, I, I remain optimistic. I think that now Ukrainian society is much more consolidated and uh, politicians and parliamentarians understand it. And, and finally, uh, I, I hope that this, this, this amendment will pass. Mm -hmm. So when, when is the next uh, date when it will be brought up for a, a hearing again in the parliament? Well, that depends on the, you know, agreements because the EU has postponed its uh, sitting where it will, be, will say whether Ukraine implements mm -hmm. visa liberalization action plans, laws or not. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that all other 
laws which were sus which were mm, which were in the parliament yesterday yes. were passed more or less i mean because there were some amendments to confiscation laws and uh, some other things which still need to be right. analyzed discussed today and, and in the coming days mm -hmm. because the concern is that these amendments which were which were brought up by the parliamentarians basically uh, made the essence of the law not that compliant with the EU uh, norms. Okay, well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. This has been Mr. Volodymyr Yermolenko, a Ukrainian political expert and one of the lecturers at Ukraine's top university. You've been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine Today.